Greetings. Today, April 1st, 2020. Reading from Srimad Bhagavatam. Chapter 14 of the first canto. The chapter is entitled, Disappearance of Lord Krishna. First offer my respectful obeisances unto my beloved spiritual master. Nitilida Pravishta Ashto Tirasatashi Shimachila Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj. And the same unto my Shiksha Guru, His Divine Grace. Nitilida Pravishta Ashto Tirasatashi Shimachila Bhakti Vedanta Swami Maharaj Srila Prabhupada. Sri Sutta Uvacha. Sri Sutta Goswami said, Arjuna went to Dwarka to see Lord Sri Krishna and other friends and also to learn from the Lord of his next activities. <clears throat> so King Yudhishthira has sent Arjuna to Dwarka to check on the activities of Lord Krishna. Because Sri Narada Muni has hinted that the Lord may be <clears throat> ending his pastimes very soon. So King Yudhishthira sent his dear friend Arjun, go to Dwarka. See what Lord see see what is Lord Krishna's next activity. A few months passed <clears throat> and Arjuna did not return. Maharaj Yudhishthir thus began to observe some inauspicious omens which were fearful in themselves. He saw that the direction of eternal time had changed, and this was very fearful. There were disruptions in the seasonal regularities. The people in general had become very greedy, angry, and deceitful, and he saw that they were adopting foul means of livelihood. <clears throat> All ordinary transactions and dealings became polluted. Cheating, even between friends and in familial affairs, there was always misunderstanding between fathers, mothers, and sons, <clears throat> between well-wishers and between brothers, even between husband and wife. There was always strain and quarrel. In course of time it came to pass that people in general became accustomed to greed, anger, pride, etc. Maharaj Yudhishthira observed all these omens and spoke to his younger brother, <clears throat> Bhima. Maharaj Yudhishthira said to his younger brother, Bhima, saying, I sent Arjuna to Dwarka to meet his friends and to learn from the personality of Godhead Krishna of his program of work. Krishnasya cha vicheshtitam. His program of work, what is going to be his next activities? <clears throat> Since he departed, seven months have passed, yet he has not returned. I do not know factually how things are going there. <clears throat> is he going to quit his earthly pastimes, as Devarshi Narada indicated? Has that time already arrived? From him only all our kingly opulence, good wives, lives, progeny, control over our subject, victory over our enemies, and future accommodations in higher planets have become possible. All this is due to his, to his causeless mercy upon us. Just see, O oh man with a tiger's strength, how many miseries due to celestial influences earthly reactions and bodily pains, all very dangerous in themselves, are foreboding danger in the near future by diluting our intelligence. The left side of my body, my thighs, arms and eyes are all quivering again and again. I am having heart palpitations due to fear. All this indicates undesirable happenings. <clears throat> Just see, O Bhima, how the she-jackal cries at the rising sun and vomits fire and how the dog barks at me fearlessly. O Bhima Sain, tiger among men, now 
Useful animals like cows are passing me on my left side, and lower animals like the asses are circumambulating me. My horses appear to weep upon seeing me. Just see, this, pi this pigeon is like a messenger of death. The shrieks of the owls and the rival crows make my heart tremble. It appears that they want to make a void of the whole situation. Just see how the smoke encircles the sky. It appears that the earth and mountains are throbbing. Just hear the cloudless thunder and see the bolts from the blue. Beautiful metaphor Srila Prabhupada gives. The bolts from the blue, in other words, lightning, even within the blue sky. The wind blows violently, blasting dust everywhere and creating darkness. Clouds are raining everywhere with bloody disasters. <clears throat> the rays of the sun are declining. And the stars appear to be fighting among themselves. Confused living entities appear to be ablaze and weeping. Rivers, tributaries, ponds, reservoirs, and the mind are all perturbed. Butter no longer ignites fire. What is this extraordinary time? What is going to happen? The calves do not suck the teats of the cows, nor do the cows give milk. They are standing crying, tears in their eyes, and the bulls take no pleasure in the pasturing grounds. The deities seem to be crying in the temple, lamenting and perspiring. They seem about to leave. All the cities, villages, towns, Gardens, mines, and hermitages are now devoid of beauty and bereft of all happiness. I do not know what sort of calamities are now awaiting us. I think that all these earthly disturbances indicate some greater loss to the good fortune of the world. The world was fortunate to have been marked with the footprints of the lotus feet of the Lord. These signs indicate that this will no longer be. <clears throat> o Brahmana, Shaunaka, while Maharaj Yudhishthir, observing the inauspicious signs on the earth at that time, was thus thinking of himself, Arjuna came back from the city of the Yadus, Dwarka. When he bowed at his feet, Arjuna came and bowed at the feet of King Yudhishthir. The king saw that his dejection was unprecedented. His head was down, and tears glided from his lotus eyes. Seeing Arjuna pale due to heartfelt anxieties, the king Remembering the indications of the sage Narada, questioned him in the midst of friends. Maharaj Yudhishthir said, My dear brother, please tell me whether our friends and relatives, such as Madhu, Boja, Dasharha, Arha, Sattvata, Andaka, and the members of the Yaru family are all passing their days in happiness. In my respect is my respectable grandfather, Shurasena, in a happy mood? And are my maternal uncle, Vasudev, and his younger brothers all doing well? His seven wives, headed by Devaki, are all sisters. Are they and their sons and daughters-in-law all happy? Are Ugrasena, whose son was the mischievous Kangsa, and his younger brother still living? Are Hid Dika, 
and his son, Kritavarma, happy? <clears throat> Arakura, Jayanta, Gada, Sa Sarana, Shatrujit, all happy? How is Balaram, the personality of Godhead and the protector of devotees? How is Prajumna, the great general of the Vrishni family? Is he happy? And is Aniruddha, the plenary expansion of the personality of Godhead, faring well? Are all the chieftains, sons of Lord Krishna, such as Sushena, Charudeshna, Samba, the sons of Jambavati and Rishabha, along with their sons, all doing well? Also, Shrutadev, Uda, and others, Nanda, Sunanda, and other leaders of liberated souls who were constant companions of the Lord are protected by Lord Balaram and Krishna. Are they all doing well in their respective functions? Do they, who are all eternally bound in friendship with us, remember our welfare? <clears throat> Is Lord Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who gives pleasure to the cows, the senses, and the brahmanas, who is very affectionate toward his devotees, enjoying the pious assembly at Dwarka Puri, surrounded by his friends? <clears throat> it's a beautiful verse, I'll read it. Bhagavan Apigovindo Brahmanyo Bhaktavatsala Kachit Pure Sudharmayam Sukkam Ashte Surid Vrita <clears throat> The original personality of Godhead, the enjoyer and Balaram, the primeval Lord Ananta, are staying in the ocean of the Yadu dynasty for the welfare, protection, and general progress of the entire universe. And the members of the Yadu dynasty, being protected by the arms of the Lord, are enjoying life like the residents of the spiritual sky. Simply by administering comforts at the lotus feet of the Lord, which is the most important of all services, the queens of Dwarka, headed by Satyabhama, induced the Lord to conquer the demigods. <clears throat> Thus, the queens enjoy things which are prerogatives of the wives of the controller of thunderbolts. <clears throat> so because of the presence of Lord Krishna, Dwarka, which is an island on the west coast of India, which was an island, had the opulences of the Vaikuntha planets. It had equal opulences as that of heaven because the Lord was present. The Lord had created a place that was even envy for the demigods in heaven. <clears throat> Krishna even brought down the Parijata flower. He took his queen Rukmini to Indra's place in heaven. And she saw the Parijata flower and she wanted it. So Krishna brought that flower, that plant, that tree that is only meant to be in the heavens, brought it to his place in Dwarka for the pleasure of his queen Rukmini. The great heroes of the Yadu dynasty, <clears throat> being protected by the arms of Lord Sri Krishna, always remain fearless in every respect, and therefore their feet trample over the Sudharma assembly house, which the best demigods deserved, but which was taken away from them. So even the Sudharma, the assembly house, where all the, the demigods used to attend, All the great demigods like Indra, Chandra, Vayu, 
Shiva, they would all go to this assembly house. But the servants of Krishna went to heaven and brought that Sudharma house to Dwarka. <clears throat> My brother Arjuna, please tell me whether your health is all right. You appear to have lost your bodily luster. Is this due to others disrespecting and neglecting you because of your long stay at Dwarka? Has someone addressed you with unfriendly words or threatened you? Could you not give charity to one who asked? Or could you not keep your promise to someone? You were always the protector of the deserving living beings such as brahmanas, children, cows, women, and the diseased. Could you not give them protection when they approached you for shelter? Have you contacted a woman of impeachable character? Or have you not properly treated a deserving woman? Or have you been defeated on the way by someone who is inferior or equal to you? Here we see some of the codes of the Kshatriyas of that time. Have you, not, have you not taken care of old men and boys who deserve to dine with you? Have you left them and taken your meals alone? Have you committed some unpardonable mistake which is considered to be abominable? Or is it that you are feeling empty for all time because you might have lost your most intimate friend, Lord Krishna? Oh, my brother, Arjuna, I can think of no other reason for your becoming so dejected. I'll read the last, that was the last verse of the chapter. So I'll read the purport, just to give us some closing. All the inquisitiveness of Maharaj Yudhishthira about the world situation was already conjectured by Maharaj Yudhishthira on the basis of Lord Krishna's disappearance from the vision of the world. And this was now disclosed to him because of the acute dejection of Arjuna, which could not have been possible otherwise. So even though he was doubtful about it, he was obliged to inquire frankly from Arjuna on the basis of, of Sri Narada's instructions. Thus ends the Bhaktivedanta purports of the fourth canto, 14th chapter of the Srimad Bhagavatam entitled The Disappearance of Lord Krishna. Thank you. A little bit of music here from Desert Dwellers. Little Kirtan. <clears throat> Hare Krishna
Jai Shri Vrindavan, Jai Shri Dorkadam, 